live from the Acadiana Center for the Arts in Lafayette, Louisiana. It's E-Town on the Road with guests Kelly Jones, Megan Brown, Lafayette, Louisiana is one of those towns Joel in Benoit, the United States, Caffrey, and there's not many of them, where they have just an incredible indigenous musical culture. And so over the years, I've gotten to know a bunch of people from Lafayette and made some friends and been down there and played music there. We, they have a great radio station, KRVS. Uh, KRVS has been playing E-Town for decades. So it was just kind of logical to go down there and kind of connect the dots between the musical culture, the just incredible variety of talent and flavors and styles. Yeah, you know you got trouble when you call on the phone. The stranger says that your baby ain't home. Boom, boom, about to get the blues attack. Welcome both Joel Savoy and Josh Caffrey to the stage, if you would. My name is Joel Savoy. I'm from Eunice, Louisiana, and I'm an instigator of uh, various musical projects. So our project is called I Want to Sing Right, Rediscovering Lomax in the Evangeline Country. And it all started when my old bandmate Josh Caffrey called me up and said, hey, I just wrote this book about the 1934 uh, trip from F. Allen and John Lomax in South Louisiana. And I just said to Josh kind of casually, hey, we should just, because I have a recording studio at home, I said, we should just get together and record some of these for fun because it's been great playing and they're really neat songs. And so we, we actually did that. We got some people together and recorded a few of them and went on for like a year, year and a half of collecting these modern recordings of people um, redoing the songs the way they were done back then or creating completely new versions of them. One day I was riding around listening to KRVS, the local uh, NPR station, and E-Town came on, and uh, Nick Forster had been in touch with me a lot. He's an old friend of mine. And when I heard E-Town, all of a sudden that day, for some reason, just dawned on me like, this would be the perfect thing to do. So I sent Nick the box set, and uh, we started talking about it. And so uh, working with Nick and the whole E-Town crew, uh, we managed to pull it kind of all together, brought in some special guests like Rhiannon Giddens and Dirk Powell. Dirk was actually on the project. But we brought in people like that, uh, people like Sonny Landreth, who are interested in the old music, who have been taking it to new places. I'm Dr. Gerd Wustemann. I'm the executive director here at the Acadiana Center for the Arts. In Lafayette, we often say that uh, you really have, you're surrounded by culture all the time. Culture is not something that people necessarily seek out one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it's something that uh, you're uh, immersed in all the time. It's very much part of the community life, and uh, it really is part of our everyday life. We access it in all kinds of ways, uh, non-stop. I think people in Acadiana, in this region here, cannot imagine life without being immersed in culture. The center has given us a unique opportunity in bringing all that to a pinpoint, allowing us to showcase it more, and doing things like taking music out of the dance halls and presenting music like that in a sit-down environment where all of a sudden you become an intent listener rather than just uh, uh, listening to the music while you're dancing and joining yourself with a couple of beers. Uh, that really has been a game changer for a lot of what's happening here in, in the music scene. This was, uh, it was inspired by a story that I grew up reading uh, um, an African-American folktale about the people who could fly. And when they were captured and put on ships and sent across the ocean, they lost their wings and they forgot how to fly. And during the time of bondage, one of the old wise men remembers the magic words. And when he says the magic words, the people who could fly rise up out of the fields and they fly off to freedom. And the people who can't fly watch them go and they tell the story to their children and their children tell it to their children and it's passed on down through the generations as this beautiful fable of hope 
and freedom. And so that inspired this song called We Could Fly. Mama, dear mama. The first night featured Dirk Powell and Rhiannon Giddens, um, two, you know, rock stars in my world. Uh, Dirk is from Kentucky originally and Rhiannon's from North Carolina. They both did the same thing in some ways in that they immersed themselves in the music that was around them as they were growing up and then kept going. He's just one of those guys who makes everything better. If he's, if he's playing, it doesn't matter what the style is, if he's playing or singing on that song, it's, it's going to be good, it's going to be better. Um, and Rhiannon has got such passion and such conviction in both her singing and her playing that um, it's, it's profound. I mean, she really commands the attention of an audience in a way that very few performers can. And so the two of them, even though it's very sparse, um, it's full of nuance, full of drive, full of passion, uh, full of the stories that are embedded in the music come through in a way that's just clear and, and powerful. She could fly across the river, a spirit in her hand, searching, always searching. The, the music here is such a combination of cultures, you know? It's a combination of cultures, and then they were kind of, I mean, it feels like they were kind of left alone. You know what I mean? It's like people have been living here, and it, and and just live in their lives. And areas of the country where that happened, was also, North Carolina was like that too. I mean, it's like, it wasn't a, a, this crazy rich part of the country, you know, and sometimes when that happens, it means that people just kind of are just living their lives. And that means that the music really can do these things that there's no outsiders coming in going, J -j 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 -j, you know? And uh, it's so nice to have places where, where that has been documented and, you know, because I think there was a lot of places like that, but not all of them were, were recorded, you know, not all of them survived. Some, some of them were bulldozed, you know, you know, it's just like cities move, they grow, you know, and I just think that that's a unique thing about this, about this place is that there's still such a tight feeling of what the culture is and that the culture comes from, you know, this mix of very disparate, you know, things. Play me, tell me true. Did it break your heart in two? When childish ways meant me and you to be cast aside forever. Well, for me, Louisiana music's always been something very soulful, very special, very unique in this country. I remember the first time I came here, I actually played old-time mountain music and bluegrass. My grandfather played that kind of music from Kentucky. And the first time I came to Southwest Louisiana, I felt all that I loved in that music with a whole different kind of strength and, and connection and um, strong cultural presence. I felt such a strong resurgence of it here. I felt that uh, all generations were relating to it, that it wasn't just something that was being considered old-fashioned. It was kept alive continually. And so I began playing with musicians in this area and just discovered one of the most soulful places in the country. It's very unique that way. It, the priorities here are music and family and food and life and uh, it's an exceptional place that way. It's very strong.
funny because, um, you know, Dirk chose a song for the show that was pretty serious about a sort of a racial divide that his dad grew up around in Kentucky and, and uh, Rhiannon had some songs that the themes were pretty serious. So on some, on some level, what they were presenting was not only at a very high level, but it was kind of high-minded and, and, uh, and slightly serious. So what was particularly gratifying and fun was that after the show, there's always a certain amount of, you know, yay, we finished the show. Um, so we all went out to a local pub called Artmosphere. It turned out to be karaoke night. Yeah, it was just incredible. It was great. And um, I followed suit um, for my first ever karaoke experience. Not nearly as uh, successfully singing the Tammy Wynette song. But you know, the reality is, it was great to see them let their hair down, come out and celebrate, knowing they had a really early flight to get to the gig that they had the next day. Um, but I feel like it was a it was a great introduction to E-Town. We take our jobs very seriously too, trying to make sure we present the best show we can to our audience, shine a positive light on our artists and our award winners and our interview guests. And they got to see what we do, although it wasn't in our home home uh, turf. But then, you know, the we're country, sort of part of the gang as we all went out and party. Tens of thousands of people for the better. Lafayette, Louisiana, as interesting, is really the home to two genuine world musics. It's a tiny town, but Cajun and Zydeco uh, music are really um, centered and focused really just in this one little town. Um, and um, part of that is a, is a result of, uh, and part of the reason that it's been able to survive is a result of the, re those recordings that the Lomax has made. My name is Josh Caffrey. I am a folklorist and a researcher and also a musician. And I wrote a book about Alan and John Lomax and their trip to Southern Louisiana. And that book turned into a series of performances and a CD, um, which in turn is what this radio show is based on today. Well, one of the things about the this selection of songs they recorded is they recorded a lot of sort of tunes that are off the beaten track there, just this sort of oddities that probably otherwise would have never been recorded or would have otherwise been forgotten. So a lot of ancient French songs that uh, if it wasn't for this documentation, no one would have ever known that they were ever sung here. Uh, and people who grew up here and who had ancestors who were French would have never known they were ever, ever sung here. But beautiful songs nonetheless that were passed on over centuries and century, centuries, but today would have been lost, right? Would have been lost in the, in the fray of mass media if it wasn't for someone going out there with pretty sophisticated media of the day to preserve them and make them um, accessible today. And until these recordings made their way home to Louisiana in the 80s, all of those songs had been forgotten. And there's a, today I would say at least 20 of them are just totally standards in a, a lot of bands' repertoire. And so that's a huge part of what's uh, important about a project like this, is that we've, uh, we've had new depth to our traditional music that we had forgotten about. How you know, how you know, Brother Lynn John is dead. How you know, how you know, Brother Lynn John is dead. There were so many incredible musical moments from these shows. What was nice about this, this adventure was that the ACA, uh, the Acadiana Center for the Arts, and Gerd and his team were ready for us. They had a great facility, great crew, good gear. Um, it was a seamless integration of these two teams and they worked really well together. And I think it, I think it got exactly the right result, which is that same balance between still being relaxed, and, and, and fun and having a, you know, inviting that opportunity for cool things to happen, 
but very pro and very high quality, high caliber. I thought that they were all such, you know, great musicians themselves, and I thought that they had a sensitivity. I felt very kin to them somehow, even though I've never worked with them before. It was sort of felt really natural and organic, and we just fell in the pocket. I love their parts they all played, too. I'd have to give my son Joel credit, too. It's a beautiful cut. I was thrilled. Let me watch my children grow to see what they Father Joel Safwa always said that a musician will never go hungry. I grew up in an environment where music did bring people together. That's exactly, like literally, what it did. You see uh, musicians from different cultures, uh, different races, all of these things coming together. Uh, and there's nothing that could bring people together like uh, playing music.